welcome to Ruddy Duck Sailing Adventures. In this episode, we leave behind the beautiful Johnson Creek that was our base camp for three days and head north-northwest approximately seven miles to Hope, Idaho. This episode is packed with adventure in some of North Idaho's more popular tourist towns, which is a little out of the norm for us, but we thoroughly enjoyed it. So follow along and enjoy the ride. You may have noticed that I installed a tiller clutch on the boat. It basically locks the tiller, push this lever down like that, it locks it to where you can't move it back and forth. So basically it steers itself. Uh, super happy with it so far. On this side we have a block and it runs through to a cleat so it's quick adjustable. If I don't want it, I just take that out. give it some slack and it has plenty of room to move but usually I keep this locked down not like that and as you can see it still moves back and forth no problem but once you want to lock it down say you need to hoist sails or something like that you're gonna just kick that lever she's good to go so I uh, really like it so far set the sails a couple times and it came in really handy it just keeps you in a you know, it allows you to leave the tiller for just a uh, short moment, basically. After a few hours of motoring, we caught up with the other sailboats and tied off at Hope Marina. Going across the bay to set an anchor. I'm gonna save on moors tonight, so we'll anchor across and uh, Stay for free. After a lovely dinner at the floating restaurant, it was time to turn in. By morning, we found our boats covered in ash and the skies darkened with smoke from the local wildfires. But that wouldn't stop me from going on a morning hike to stretch the legs and enjoy a beautiful cedar grove. Thank you. 
Shortly after the hike, it was time to start making our way towards Sandpoint, the farthest destination we can reach by sailboat. a little bit of wind so we're going to take advantage of it it's not much but uh it ain't bad either there's johnny and Haley. they're just setting up their sails right now so, yeah we got about three knots three four knots of wind perfect In case you guys are wondering which boat is faster, the Newport or the West White Potter, it is definitely the Newport in just about every point of sail. Um, I sailed away from the there, back there. I don't know, we started sailing probably a half hour ago. So, yeah. But the West White Potter is more stable. I think it'd be better to ride out a storm in, um, and it's got less sail area, so it's just more stable all, all around. Um, but if you want to go fast occasionally, might look at a new port.
is the first time the ruddy duck would stay at a marina. It was a very convenient location, close to downtown and the city beach, where we would spend the rest of the day cooling off and playing in the water. Morning found us rested up and ready to go, so we grabbed our longboards and set off to carve some trails. Sandpoint prides itself on being a walking town, so we put the boards away and went back into town to check out all the artwork and explore the many shops on First Avenue. Aside from being a walking town, Sandpoint is also a railroad town. Trains can be heard moving cargo day and night. In 1881, work started here to build the second transcontinental railroad, connecting Lake Superior on the east coast to the Puget Sound on the west. Three years later, the line was completed and helped to establish logging and lumber companies in the area. Settlers would follow to turn Sandpoint from a rough western town into a respectable community. 
Today, there are four railroads that come through this area, making it one of only two railroad funnels in the nation where so many lines converge. The sounds of the railroad are the sounds of Sandpoint. Today was the day we had planned on leaving and sailing to a new location on our way back down the lake. However, some very strong winds coming from the direction we wanted to go prompted me to check the wind forecast. The forecast called for 27 knot winds on the nose for most of the day, with the wind direction and intensity switching overnight. But the question was, how were the actual conditions on the lake? To find that out, we would need to skate out to the Long Bridge. decided that we would stay and explore the town one more day and wait for conditions to change, knowing they would be much worse around the corner where we had planned to go. found us blanketed in thick smoke due to the previous day's high winds, stoking the forest fires. As you notice, the weather was pretty rough this morning. Uh, we had some four foot rollers and some like 20 knot winds. So we decided to go ahead and leave the ready duck in Sandpoint. And Molly and I, my, my wife and I, are gonna motor uh, our Ericsson back to Bayview to pick up the trailer. So I think we made a good call leaving it there. Uh, even though I did want to, you know, 
complete the whole passage and get the mileage in, but it is what it is. That's what happens when you cruise a small boat. Uh, you're limited by some things. You gotta make uh, decisions sometimes. So that's what we did, and we got another six hours, probably seven hours of just driving this, motoring it back to the marina to get the trailer. So here we go. Pretty darn smoky out today. Um, we're out on the lake and you can't see land just about anywhere. Looks like we're on the ocean. Pretty crazy. made it back to Bayview and uh, got the trailer loaded up so we're grabbing a few drinks right now and we're gonna head back to Sandpoint and pick up the ready duck so it's gonna take about a half hour and then we'll uh, load her up and start taking everything down so here we go back to Sandpoint <laughs> 